الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا A day with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم In our last episode we discussed in detail how the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to wake up and the things that he used to do and the things that he used to say from the adhkar عليه الصلاة والسلام After making his adhkar the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after he had a long night prayer, he would always try to take a nap right before Salatul Fajr in order to gain strength to be ready for Salatul Fajr and to be ready for all of the deeds and the actions he had to perform throughout the day. And SubhanAllah, many people, sometimes they want to get up and pray during the night and they miss Salatul Fajr. Forgetting this nap and how strategic it is in order to have the strength to be able to go to pray the, the salah in the jama'ah, in the congregation, and have strength throughout the day as well. So the Prophet ﷺ would take a short nap before the Adhan of Fajr. And then he would wake up, alayhi salatu wasalam, hearing the Adhan of Bilal radiallahu an, and repeating after him. The Sunnah, when you hear the Adhan, is to repeat after the Mu'adhan, to get the ajr, to get the reward, and once again to reflect on the meanings. Except for when the Mu'adhan says Hayal al-Salah and Hayal al-Falah Then you say La hawla wa la quwata illa billah After repeating after the Mu'adhan The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would start preparing for the Salat And from the first things that he would do obviously is making wudu if he had to make wudu Or making ghusl if he had to make ghusl And this sleep was not a heavy sleep. Sometimes he would wake up and he would go and pray and they say, you didn't make wudu, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu And he would say that verily, my eyes sleep but my heart doesn't sleep. He would get up and he would offer the two rakats of the Fajr prayer. And the two rakats of Fajr prayer, it's important that we know that it's sunnah to do the sunnah in the house. And it's very important when you focus on doing some of the sunnahs, realizing that you can get much more ajr much more reward for doing them if you do them in the same way that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do. So if you wake up for Fajr and you immediately pray the two rakats in the house, there's a double sunnah there. So you're getting the reward of praying the two rakats of Fajr and the reward of praying at home. And these two rakats are some of the most important sunnahs. Why? Because Rasulullah sallallahu told us that it's khayru min dunya wa ma fiha, as it came in Sahih Muslim, that it's better than the dunya and what's in it. And another narration, he said that it's more dearer to me or beloved to me than the, everything in the dunya. Two rakats, more beloved to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and better than the dunya and what's upon them. And yet, let's ask ourselves and let's be honest, how many of us who do pray five times a day tend to neglect these two rakats of fajr, these two sunnahs of fajr? How many of us neglect them? How many of us say, yeah, let's just pray the fard and get it over with? Even if you're not saying that with your tongue, sometimes this is the actions. These are actions where we say, we just do the fard. Leaving all of this ajr and reward of something better than the dunya and what's in it. And from the hikmah, the wisdom of these two rakats, is to get you into the zone, the salat zone, like a warm up you would do before exercising. The Prophet when he would wake up for the night prayer, he would pray two light rakats. Also before the fajr, two light rakats. So it's the sunnah that these two rakats are light. And what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa used to read during these surahs, the most of the time he would read surah al-ikhlas, or surah al-kafirun, the first rakat, and surah al-ikhlas, qul huwa allahu ahad, and the second rakat. This is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Other times, other times he would read from different verses. Just a verse. For example, he would read from verse 136 in Surah Baqarah, Qul amanna billah. 
in the first rakah and the second rakah he would read from Surah Ali Imran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said قُلْ يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ تَعَالُوا إِلَىٰ كَرِمَةٍ سَوَاءٍ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ and, and another rakah sometimes he would read from the other verse in Surah Ali Imran uh, فَلَمَّا أَحَسَّ عِيسَ مِنْهُمُ الْكُفْرُ so these are some of the verses that Rasulullah would read just one verse and as Aisha said رضي الله عنها that it would be short they wouldn't be too long one of the things I want us to reflect on because one of the objectives is not just to learn not just to know what our beloved Prophet وسلم, used to do in his day as we spend the day with Rasulullah وسلم, in this episode or in this series we need to reflect on the means of why he would do certain things for example, have you ever thought why he would start his day with Surah Al-Kafirun in the first rakah and Surah Al-Ikhlas in the second rakah? Have you ever asked yourself why he would end his night prayer and his witr with these same two surahs in the witr prayer, in the Shaf'an witr? Have you ever asked yourself why he would read these as well and the two rakats after the tawaf? What is so unique about these two surahs. What makes them so special that our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to focus on them? It's a question you need to ask. Don't just learn the sunnah for the barakah. Alhamdulillah, we learn we're getting barakah. We're getting ajr, we're getting reward, we're getting thawab. Alhamdulillah, that's one of our objectives, no doubt. We want to do it just because Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did it. But it's actually deeper. It's actually deeper than that. The fact that he used to always read these surahs in several places throughout his, his life, alayhi salatu wasalam. Surah Al-Kafirun. Reflect on the meanings. When you free yourself from the kufr, from disbelief, you free yourself from shirk and from those who worship and join partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their worship. And then in the second surah, Al-Ikhlas, true sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the only one. It reminds us of why we're here in this dunya for the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah is built upon what? la ilaha illallah on negating in the beginning of the shahada anything worshipped with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then to affirm in the second part illallah except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's the only one who has the right to be worshipped the importance of tawheed you're reminding yourself when you start your day why you're here on this earth We've only created the jinn and the mankind to worship me, Allah says. We're here to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're here to strive to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These surahs remind us of the importance of tawheed. After reading these surahs, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in the two rakats of fajr, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi would then take another quick nap waiting for the Sahaba to come he will lay on his right side alayhi salatu was salam and wait for Bilal to come and call him for the prayer once again being strategic relaxing getting ready for the first prayer of the day Salatul Fajr to make sure that's done correctly to make sure it's done with energy and the Sunnah in this some of our brothers actually do like a little 15 second one and I, I, I love it to see it when the brothers do it even sometimes in the masjid you see it goes on the side just for like, for like 15 seconds 30 seconds and inshallah ta'ala if that's his niyyah that's his intention inshallah ta'ala he's going to get reward for that but the actual sunnah as the scholars mentioned is to be like a proper nap where you're properly you, you might end up be sleeping but you're going to be relaxing anyways because we know this because it's from the sunnah and the hadith is that he would wait for the Sahaba to gather in the masjid and he wait for Bilal to come and call him. So we actually know that it's not one, a, a 15 second, 30 second one. He would actually be uh, relaxing alayhi salatu So there's another sunnah that he would do, waiting until Bilal would come and call him and then he would go and join his companions and lead them in the, in the Fajr prayer. After the companions had gathered in the masjid and the rows had been completed, Bilal radiallahu an would call Rasulullah sallallahu He would come to his door, to his house, and he would say, as ya Rasulullah. It's time for prayer, ya Rasulullah. Upon hearing this, upon hearing this, the Prophet would get up 
and he would enter into the masjid. Leaving his house, first of all, making the dua of the khuruj. The dua that none of us should ever, ever, ever forget when we leave our houses. And I want you to reflect on these two duas that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make when he would leave his house. Reflect on them with us here today in this episode, but also make it part of your daily pattern. When you follow in the footsteps of Rasulullah and you're making these du'as to reflect on the meanings. Because wallahi, and this is something I've always been reflecting on, how strong and how powerful these two du'as are. Wallahi, if you reflect on the meanings and how deep they are, you're going to see that every single thing that Rasulullah mentions in these two du'as, wallahi, it hasn't left anything out. Anything that you can face once you leave your house, because your house, that's your area of protection. It should be a place, a fortress, where you can stay safe from shaitan, safe from the fitness, safe from the problems, safe from the evil of other people. If you're somebody who's established your house upon taqwa. But once you leave, that's when you can face all kinds of difficulties, all kinds of problems. But reflect on the meanings of these du'as and you'll see, subhanAllah, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't leave anything that we can face outside of our houses. What are these two du'as he used to make? We're going to tell you, but we have to take a quick break. So stay tuned, inshallah, we'll be right back. Mm -hmm.